And also for the cellular assay, cellular assay development and validation, of course, we need to scale the differentiation process and if possible, I mean, this will be, a, of course, a more long-term uh, goal uh, adapted to high-throughput methodologies, if it's, po if it's possible. And for example, uh, SA endpoints with high-content imaging, these sort of uh, technologies. And uh, of course, we want to discuss uh, the different disease areas. I mean, I think pharmaceutical industry has, because the disease areas are our main area of, of focus of research, but still I think uh, the applicant consortium has uh, a lot to bring in the knowledge on the specific disease areas that we would like to tackle, and the same applies to safety issues and questions. These are the main things that for the applicant consortium. We can go back later. Uh, in the in-kind contributions from, from the FPA members, that we had this, we have discussed this, of course, for the project I divided this morning, the work packages for sim simplicity, project management, of also inclusive fees and grants for external support for the budgeting on, on the different things that was discussed a little bit this morning. Uh, for sample collection, also as well as the applicant consortium, clinical expertise for the selection of the patient populations, access to samples from selected clinical trials if appropriate, and uh, yeah. Uh, also for the biobank, provide scientific guidance and also possibly business and legal advice on feasibility and sustainability if this biobank will be something which we expect that will last longer than the consortium will be standing on, on its own feet, so to speak. For data management, of course, generation of data sets in the appropriate format and statistical evaluation of, the, of predictive models that one will generate with the data which is collected. The work package five is the communication with the other consortia, and I think uh, FPA members are a crucial point of contact because most of the other consortia have par are partly sponsored by FPA, so we are in different consortia. Each, each one of our companies is in several consortia, so I think there as well um, FPA will have a, a, strong, a strong impact there. And also active participation and training exchanges, either hosting uh, some academic or SME partners which might come to perform some essays or, or actually go into other institutions to learn. I think we, we wanted to also make a point that uh, all the, the, the methods we develop on the technologies, there also there is a fluid communication that is distributed uh, properly or appropriately. Uh, for, the four, for the three different work packages, of course, uh, EFIA will pr provide the clinical expertise to guide the research, of course, on the three areas that I outlined before. Uh, also pr pr uh, provide experimental support for the characterization of the cell types with the essays that require complex technologies, for example, genotyping or high content imaging, gene expression analysis, so wet lab uh, support, and possibly fees and grants if necessary for purchasing of, of cell lines because maybe some is, is more um, suited to buy some of the cell lines if they are already available. Uh, also for essay development, uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry is in a unique position to provide uh, compounds, I mean actually physical compounds, either commercially available compounds or that need to be resynthesized or also proprietary compounds which are not commercially available that could be used for qualification and validation of, of essays. And of course experimental support in automation where a pharmaceutical industry has kind of a strong expertise to improve the, the throughput as necessary. So as you see, I think for both, for all the, the work packages that were at the moment outlined, as we see a strong involvement of both academic and pharmaceutical industry participants. What's in it for you? That was a nice title of this template slide. I think for us, pharmaceutical industry, uh, better scientific knowledge will, will make us work much better. We would be will be quicker to get safe and efficacious medicines for the patients. I think this is clear that if we have better systems to work with, we, can, we will achieve better results. For the academic research, of course, besides of, of also the the progress in the in the scientific field, also understanding better what needs there are around in pharmaceutical industry, will uh, uh, help to focus the research as well. Which areas are really of main interest from pharmaceutical, and also it will uh, facilitate the. Uh, at, uh, to get access to the knowledge from pharmaceutical industries. A lot of uh, knowledge and scientific expertise in pharma, which is also not always accessible to everyone. 
Uh, for the small and medium enterprises, I think they can benefit by generating tailor-made commercially attractive technologies because we will be working with potential future partners. So we will need what needs. You will have a first f a good flavor of what is, are the needs from academia and on pharma. And for the patient organizations, of course, uh, we, they can discuss the main areas of interest and, and possibly influence also the medical, the medical research when we are, we're discussing here. So I think, again, from the private-public partnership, I think this is a, is, a, is a proposal that should benefit uh, all the involved partners. The key deliverables, uh, again, I will we'll go quickly through this. This is all outlined in the document. So the definition and, and the selection of suitable patient population, that's one of the first things we have to do because this is our raw material for the specific diseases, diabetes, CNS, and for toxicology, and uh, use this, the specific patient sources and the populations that need to be uh, selected, defined first, and then recruited. The biobank and central test facility generate the biobank for the IPS-derived cells. Here again, biobanks, um, I am aware, and we are all aware that there are uh, several biobanks available. So for those, whether it's an independent biobank, which starts from, from the scratch, is something which uh, comes with the applicant consortium because maybe some of the applicant institutions in the applicant consortium has already such biobank, or there's an existing biobank, which, which we could discuss and, and incorporate. This needs to be discussed. I mean, uh, the best most economic and efficient solution will be sought, of course. Uh, for the, the IPS cells that we would bank, uh, the documentation of the characterization, of course, needs to be av made available, phenotype, genotype, and so on. Um, a large uh, scale of uh, different cell lines for per each disease and cell type, and validate assays for to high throughput screening. And a central resource for the essay uh, performance that needs to be would would like to be established. So this is the the second uh, deliverable of having a biobank and a central facility. For drug efficacy, we would like to define some panel of essays. So we'll define hopefully pretty early in the in the process. And then additional essays, of course, might be developed throughout the project. Of course, this doesn't the clock doesn't stop. But we, we need to focus on the first series of suitable biological and cellular essays at the beginning. Validation of these essays and the miniaturization and scaling of these essays, of course. And then at the end, I think, I think we need to, to be aware that this will take time to make, be able to assess, to assess the, the outcome with the different phenotypes, different essays, different cell types, and different phenotypes to get the broad picture. picture. Of course, we will aim and we have stepwise approach, but I think we will need quite a long time. In this five years is a long time, but the goal is also very ambitious. For safety assessment, again, also the preliminary uh, essays, essays panel will be defined and then continuously updated. And then some of the essays will be validated using, of course, on the IPS-derived cells, but using the model compounds that can, with non-toxic liabilities, as said, could be commercial, could be compounds uh, which are uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. Essays uh, derived from different po patient populations, I mean, mainly healthy, but maybe also, or possibly also different phenotypes, either disease or susceptibility phenotypes, which are more relevant for safety assessment assessment possibly. And again, scalability and improved culture conditions. I mean, we want a system which is scientifically sound, that provides good results, but we also need something which is usable, that we could get a robust system that will, will be repeat, we can, be, can be repeated and can be used in a, in a, in a good throughput. I think that's the, the main uh, key deliverables. Uh, there is a more extensive list in the call, of course, that you have all access to. Um, so that it can be already discussed, but this is the main thing. I just want to acknowledge uh, the, the different representative of the companies. Ian Cotgreave, as I said, he's from AstraZeneca. He's the co-chair of the FPI consortium. I have Ralph and, and Mario from Boring and Ingeheim, Peter and Jan from Janssen, John, Lisa, and Hugh from Lilly, and then we have Beatrice, Ninoch, and Paul from Mark Serono, Matthias Hansen from Novo Nordis, Ari from Orion, James from Pfizer, um, myself, uh, and my colleague Martin Graf, who is a very good expert in stem cells and more from the safety field, uh, we, which are participating here, and Jean-Francois Deleuze from Sanofi Aventis, which are the, the current representative of the FPI consortium, who had all provided very useful input and were involved in a lot of discussions to, to, to put the call to a state it is now. 
And with that, I think I'll be ready to take questions. I'm sure there will be some.